Ukraine says it's in a race against time to save the eastern Donbass region, pleading to its allies for advanced rocket systems to hit Russian supply lines. Shanghai's housebound residents challenged the local enforcers of China's strict coronavirus restrictions as infections drop. Football fans celebrate Real Madrid's Champion League win against Liverpool as the British club launches an investigation into fan treatment which delayed the match. Ruben Eslund wins the Palm d'Or at the 75th Cannes Film Festival for his satire Triangle of Sadness, his second award in five years. Ukraine says it's in a race against time to save the eastern Donbass region as Russian artillery and airstrikes threaten to turn the tide of the war. To hold further advances in Luhansk and Donetsk, Kyiv says it urgently needs US-made mobile multiple launch rocket systems. The rockets would be capable of striking Russian firing positions, military bases and more at a range of up to 300 kilometers. Every day we work to strengthen our defense, President Vladimir Zelensky says. This is primarily the supply of weapons. Every day we are approaching the situation when our army will prevail over the invaders technologically and in striking force. Of course, a lot depends on the partners, from their readiness to provide Ukraine with everything necessary to protect freedom. And I look forward to the good news next week. In the north, fields are littered with unexploded artillery shells. Many warehouses and farming equipment have already been destroyed. The country's growing food crisis has been worsened by Ukraine's inability to ship millions of tons of grain and other agricultural products. The Russian blockade of its ports has halted much of that flow, threatening global supply. Many of those ports are now heavily mined. But despite that, an open arms ship carrying food has docked in the Odessa region. The port of Mariupol resumed operations on Saturday after Russian forces said they had finished clearing mines from the waters. The Kremlin says Russian President Vladimir Putin has expressed his readiness to find ways to export grain from Ukraine during a telephone conversation with French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. A press statement from the presidential office stated that the Russian leader also confirmed the country's willingness to renew dialogue. The port of Mariupol resumed operations Saturday morning after Russian forces said they finished clearing mines and removed sunken ships from the waters off of the city. A vessel bound for the southern Russian city of Rostov-on-Don entered Mariupol's seaport on the Azov Sea in the early hours of Saturday. The ships of the Novorossiysk naval base of the Black Sea Fleet ensured the safe passage of a merchant ship to the port of Mariupol. At the moment, the loading has begun. However, Ukrainian authorities say that civilian navigation of the Azov and Black Seas remain blocked. Case Huizingha, a Dutch farmer in Ukraine, is calling for a solution to allow exports through. The only thing we need is to open the Black Sea ports and to kick out the Russians so we can, can continue our work here. Uh, and all the other things, transport by road or transport by train through Europe, that's, that's a, a drop in the ocean. Um, you know, the Black Sea ports, they export 80, 90 percent of Ukraine's grain. According to him, Ukraine still has nearly a third of last year's harvest in the socks, partly in the harbors and a lot still in the barns of farmers. Since the war in Ukraine began, the food supply chains have been disrupted globally, threatening the world with significant food shortages. Shanghai has been under strict lockdown for two months. China has operated a zero-tolerance COVID-19 policy since the pandemic began. While cases are in rapid decline, the city's 21 million inhabitants are now living in precaution zones. In theory, residents are free to leave their homes, but only at the discretion of their neighbourhood committees. A grassroots organisation the ruling Communist Party relies on to enforce coronavirus restrictions. Authorities have promised to ease restrictions in June, but some frustrated residents have confronted their local watchdogs. In many parts of the city, only one person per household is allowed out for essential reasons. While in other communities, members say their governing representatives have refused to allow them out at all. 
While criticism of China's hard line on the virus continues to grow, many restaurants and non-essential businesses remain closed. Protests and riots broke out in Iran following a building collapse in Abadan. So far, rescue workers have recovered 29 dead, with more feared still buried under the rubble. This comes as Iran suffers worsening economic conditions under crushing U.S. sanctions over its nuclear program, fueling concern in the Islamic Republic of renewed widespread unrest. A stunning victory for Real Madrid in Europe's premier football contest, beating Liverpool 1-0 for a record 14th time. For these fans, many who travelled from all over the world, the triumph was no surprise. And the party continued into the early hours of the morning. I was always confident, this fan says. And actually, I'm happy because this Champions League was the best in its history. Madrid has won after making so many comebacks. And it was just the best Champions League ever. Liverpool's magnificent season once offered up the tantalising prospect of a historic quadruple, only to end amid the chaos of Paris. We didn't deserve to win the game. The one chance for Salah right at the end is that it was the golden moment and Courtois played out of his skin all night. So, yeah. 24 shots on goal and if we can't get past with 24 shots, you don't deserve to win the game at the end of the day. So, yeah. it's what it is. Both teams deserve to be here in Paris for the showpiece match, but in the end there can only be one winner. Liverpool fans will be disappointed with this result. They had more shots on target than Real Madrid, but Thibaut Courtois produced a man of the match performance to keep a clean sheet. 1-0 was the final score, and this isn't down to luck, it's down to experience. Real Madrid have done this against the best teams in this competition, PSG, Manchester City, Chelsea, and now Liverpool have suffered the same fate. Another European title for Real Madrid, and I'm pretty sure their fans will be celebrating all night long in the French capital. Andy Rubini for Euronews in Paris. The uninhibited, biting, fierce and very realistic satire on the world of fashion and influencers conquered the Cannes Film Festival. Tsar Emir Ebrahami won the Best Actress Award for her role in Holy Spider by Danish-Iranian director Ali Abbasi, while Song Kang-ho, the Korean actor of Parasite, won the Best Actor Award for Broker by Japanese director Kore Eda. Winning the Palme d'Or for the second time since 2017 was Swedish director Ruben Ostlund with the film The Triangle of Sadness. If you, if you compare European cinema with an American cinema, for example, or the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon cinema, I mean, what I like about the European film history is that uh, we have always focused a lot on society question. We have talked about how do we create a better society, what, do, what, what, what is it that we don't like, uh, what, what, would, what do we need to change. So cinema has been a tool to try to make things better. And I can't think of anything more pointless than make movies if I don't want to change something, if I don't want to make something better. So, and this is European cinema for me. <laughs> Can I get you anything to drink? Uh, no. In Triangle of Sadness, everything at first seems like a dream, but a catastrophic event will turn the journey into a nightmarish adventure, sort of Titanic. Ostlund, with this second pan, joins eight fellow directors, including the Dardenne brothers, Ken Loach and Francis Ford Coppola, who have all won the prestigious and coveted award twice. The Cannes Film Festival marked its 75th anniversary in style, celebrating the return of cinema to the big screen with films from all over the world. But it is Europe and European cinema that are the big winners of this 2022 edition, with a second Palme d'Or for Triangle of Sadness by Swedish director Ruben Oslund. But also two Grand Jury Prize co-winners, with Closed by the young Belgian director Lucas Dont and the film by veteran French director Claire Denis for her Stars at Noon. Finally, two jury prizes, also co-winners for Otto Montaigne by Belgian director couple Felix van Groningen and Charlotte van der Meersch, and for EO by 84-year-old Polish director Jerzy Skolimowski. Proof, if any were needed, of the diversity and modernity of European cinema. At the Cannes Film Festival, Frédéric Ponsard for Euronews.